If you think about the last 20 years in IT operations, what's sort of synonymous with ops, especially maybe for management? Pain. <laughs> Dashboards. Dashboards, right. And like with packaged applications, it's easy, right? They have mature monitoring interfaces. You pretty much just point your tool at it, you run a discovery, and it lights everything up for you. But increasingly, applications aren't just based on package applications, right? They're, they're, they're custom or they're cloud native. And it seems like there's a lot of data, but how do you build something out of that that actually provides something visual? And it's actually pretty hard, in some cases, even just to go get the data. And once you have the data, then you have to figure out what to do with the data. And then putting the dashboard together, you know, what do you include? What are your key metrics? What's important? What's not? Yeah, that's right. right. And it's really interesting, right? Because developers don't really care about dashboards. It passes the unit test, you throw it back over to ops. Um, but it's something that we actually need, and not only because you know, sort of out of the corner of our eye we can recognize a problem, something that we've been looking at over and over on a regular dashboard, but it's also not bad for your career that when the big boss walks into the knock, there's really great walls of green status, right? So that they know that you've got your finger on the pulse of operations. Yeah, that's right. And, and certainly, it's not just good for the boss to see what's going on, it's actually pretty useful for you, too. Right. right. Because but, but when your application's running well, uh, your users are generally happy, right? But when things start going wrong, you start getting complaints, people start getting a little grumpy. That's right. And when you get grumpy and your customers get grumpy, your boss gets grumpy, everybody's grumpy. <laughs> and things just snowball downhill as the business falls apart. All right, so what do you do to, when you need to build dashboards? You've got data all over the place, but it's non-conventional. It's not something that you just pull. How do you still build dashboards out of that? Well, let's use a more concrete example. Let's say we're looking at a web server uh, for an e-commerce site, and we're looking at uh, you know, some sort of issue going on. We don't know what it is. We don't know where it is. Where do we start? We could start with the log data. Fantastic. Let's jump into Logly for that. Let's do it. All right, so here we are on the main search screen of Logly. And what you're going to see right away is using the field explorer on the left-hand side here, you'll be able to identify your different log types. Now, those are going to get automatically recognized and parsed out. So if we drill into our Apache logs in this example, uh, you can see the different fields that will automatically get peeled out here. So did you configure that parsing, or was that built in? That's all built in. Uh, so there's a number of popular log types that Logly will automatically recognize and then parse out for you. So, so that's actually kind of interesting because most log management solutions, you have to build log parsers and you have to go install those log parsers. You have to do a lot of work just to get the data into a format that you can actually understand. Absolutely. So let's start with maybe just creating a very simple chart uh, for our HTTP status codes, okay. right? We want to see how the web server is doing. That's the quickest way to have a look at it. Using the field actions dropdown, you can create a chart super easy, right? It's two clicks, and now we're looking at a bar chart that shows our different status mm -hmm. codes. Uh, maybe we wanted something more like a, something over time, right? So we could use a column chart, and you'll see then if we split by our Apache status again. Now you can get an idea of that performance over time. So basically what you're doing here is you have um, sort of an, uh, an explorer view, right? So you're using uh, search techniques to narrow down the data that's actually displayed in the chart. And then you're just sort of visually cycling through different chart types to find something that really expresses that well. Yeah. And actually, it was, I think it was even a little simpler than that. You just clicked on a couple of fields. You didn't even have to write a search or do anything complex. Right. You just clicked on some things, and now you have a chart that you can see the data with. Yeah, and absolutely, you can use some of the more advanced search options if you want. But if you're making a simple chart like this, it can go in with sure. just a couple clicks. Yeah, and in the case of this HTTP web server that we're looking at, you have these status codes. You can look at it. Now we can see a trend over time, which really just shows us what those status codes look like. So can you show how we filter the data within this chart? Yeah, there's a, a number of different options you can use. So one is you can add additional filters here just by clicking on this and picking a particular field that you might want to filter out. Or you can do something as simple and temporary as just clicking on any of the data elements from the chart itself and, okay. and hide those temporarily. Good. So w what if I wanted to take this chart, though, and put it into a dashboard that we could throw up onto the screen in the NOC? Yeah, absolutely. Super easy. So you see up in the upper right-hand corner here, this is the Edit Chart button. Mm -hmm. When you click on that, it'll automatically take you over to the chart editor. It's going to look really similar to the screen you were looking at before, right? You'll have all those same options to make any edits, anything like that. But really, all you're going to want to do is give this a name quick. Mm -hmm. All right. And that effectively saves it. Yeah, and then you can actually hit the Save button, and that's when it's going to appear in your library. OK. So then after you click on your library, you can see we've got our chart that we just created there. Mm -hmm. To add it to a dashboard, very simple. Just click on that 
checkbox in the upper left hand corner. And then you'll see this option become selectable, create new dashboard with selected charts. Okay. When we're doing that, all you gotta do is give it a name. And there we go. We're getting started on our dashboard already. Okay. Now, as we create additional charts to add them in, very easy. All you have to do is come to the Edit Dashboard button here. Mm -hmm. And then you can see this drop down that you can just pick whatever chart you want from there. Okay. Well, so, so the trend charts are pretty. They're nice. They give you some visibility into what's happening. In this case, the status codes, of course. But what if I just wanted to have some kind of indicator that shows me perhaps um, a volume of, of one of those metrics that I have here. How do I do that? Yeah, absolutely. So with Logly, you can also uh, treat certain aspects of the logs as a numeric string uh, okay. as, instead okay. of just text. Uh, so what we'll look at here is maybe the request size. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And this may be an indicator if a lot of the requests are coming through very small or very large, mm -hmm. it might help us understand what's going on with sure. our web server. So again, going back to that field actions, all you have to do is uh, click on any of these chart types. We'll do statistics over time, maybe the average size over time okay. to give us an idea. So, and you can see here as it's going on throughout the day where we're falling on that okay. scale. So in this case, you're generating roll-up counts based on the number of events that meet that criteria. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So every event we receive has a size in it, and then we do a little bit of math on it, and then we can put it on our chart. Right, so the key thing here is if we see something that looks abnormal or different from what we would typically see, then we can flag that and start to go investigate a little bit further. Yeah, absolutely. So let's actually go ahead and just add this to the chart really quick. And then we'll go from the dashboard and show you how you can do some drill downs back to search. So while you're doing this, we now have effectively a dashboard that has two different types of charts on it. Of course, we could go in and we could add any number of other charts related to other pieces of information. But getting back to your example of the web server going down, effectively what we're looking at here is a representation of the, in this case, performance of our site, or potentially even the health, right? Status codes, request sizes, and so forth. And obviously, as we continue to look at more dimensions of that website, we can get a pretty good picture of what's going on, put that up into our knock so we can see exactly what's going on, and ta-da. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, there's actually a drill down that exists from any dashboard, if you see uh, you know, a particular spike, so it looks like we have a lot of 500s mm -hmm. coming in around here, just go ahead and click on any of the charts. It'll take you back to search and it's gonna apply all of the search filters you had uh, so that you can actually start um, investigating individual events. So what if instead of looking at this log data, I needed to drill a little bit deeper into the application and I needed to see what was happening inside of the application as opposed to the system where the application is actually running. What do I do? Sure. Well, uh, we have another tool that a lot of our customers use. That's App Optics. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to provide the ability to get trace level data all the way down to code level analytics, as well as metrics from your infrastructure and some of the other systems that you might be interacting with. And that's really helpful, especially when you get to cloud scale or just really uh, heavily used applications you start to manage by exception rather than just looking at you know sort of performance metrics. Sure. Absolutely. So at its highest level, the APM data that you're going to be able to collect with App Optics is going to be things like the average response time, the average number of requests, mm -hmm. if you're having a particular rate of errors based on those requests. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll help you diagnose those sorts of things at the top level. And, and these are based off of individual activities, essentially, that are happening within the application itself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Every individual request and then all of the things that go up to serve that request. Okay. Uh, the other half of App Optics is the infrastructure monitoring. So looking at that, we're going to be looking at basic counters like CPU, memory, mm -hmm. disk. Um, but we can also do custom metrics. You can send in uh, metrics from all sorts of different devices. And anything that you submit via the API, we would mm -hmm. treat the same as anything else that we would have collected, okay. which gives you the ability to put it on a dashboard next to those uh, metrics and then alert on them and, and 
so forth. So that might be something like uh, latency from a particular system or uh, average sale price on a shopping cart uh, checkout, like you would expect if performance is going down. Sure. Maybe the uh, people aren't browsing for as many attach uh, for a part of that yeah. part, part of that. Data. Or, or even potentially a call to a database, which is slow because maybe the database query itself was not written as well as it could have been. Absolutely. That level of data could come from the trace side of things. Yeah. Let's take a look at one of the dashboards that you built to sure. show this data. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. So we'll go ahead and jump in here. And really what I wanted to do is combine uh, different metrics from a lot of different places throughout our environment. Right. So here's that CPU memory disk that we were talking about before. Kind of across this top row is all infrastructure level metrics. And then the next row down, we're looking at some APM statistics. Right. So you can see things like the average response time uh, of our services and the 99th 95th and 50th worst responding percentiles, mm -hmm. um, as well as the different services we have in our environment, right? This is a microservice driven architecture, so we have a couple of different services interacting, and it's important to know which one may be acting up. Yeah, and I noticed that even while you're sitting here, some of these little widgets on this dashboard are changing and moving. Is this a live dashboard? Absolutely. It'll okay. update in real time as we, as we collect more counters for things. Uh, you can also change the time frame you're looking at if you wanted to do something more like maybe the last 24 hours worth of data. Okay. When I talk to customers, one of the things that they really like, especially when they get started, is that, I mean, you've been showing crafting custom dashboards from scratch, but there are a lot of out-of-the-box out dashboards that just sort of light up as soon as you start bringing data in so that you can really start to learn about non-standard or custom or business data and how to present it instead of just basically, just basically looking at a blank screen. Yeah, that's a great point. And uh, we actually have out-of-the-box dashboards for both Logly and app optics. Uh, the app optics ones that will be based on either the host agent or if you're using any plugins to get some additional data from a different system. And these plugins are for those different applications that we have visibility into, or are they something different? Yeah, absolutely. So the plugins are actually associated with the host agent. Uh, and you can see I pulled it up on the screen here, some of our host agent plugins. So you can see we were working with Apache already. Mm -hmm. uh, to set any of these things up is actually really simple. All you have to do is make a small edit on a configuration file, and then you'll begin collecting this data, and you'll automatically get the dashboards associated with them. OK, that's great. This dashboard looks pretty complete. It looks pretty ready to go. But how do I create one of these widgets from the data that we have within AppOptics? Mm, yeah, actually, it's super simple. So let's jump into a, a dashboard here. We'll just create a new one from scratch. Uh, all you have to do is it, it'll start you with this, but if you've already got a widget on there, just add a new chart with this button up top. But anyway, so we'll jump right in, pick the kind of chart that we want, and then you'll see we just have a list of every metric that we're collecting. Okay. So depending on what you're looking for, maybe you're looking for a CPU metric, just type in CPU. It'll automatically update the list, and you can see we have an AWS plugin. Uh, we have a Apache plugin. Hmm. So now these aren't the actual list of plugins. These are the list of metrics that are coming from the plugins. Because you could have thousands of metrics potentially, and what you're really doing here is just trying to make it as easy as possible to be able to search out for the ones that you need for the, for the widget. Absolutely. And, and there's a pretty easy naming convention. But say you're looking for something associated with CPU, you could just start typing CPU, and you'll see all the ones that we're looking at. So we'll pick something very simple like CPU utilization percentage. Uh, and there we go. All you'd have to do then is hit Save. And that chart is out there. Okay. And now there's some additional options you can do for customization, but at its core, this is all you need. So voila, now voila. we start building our dashboard similar to the one that you had shown just a moment ago. Absolutely. Cool. All right, Bradley, this dashboard is great, but walk us through the steps of creating a custom chart so that you have a piece of data that you want to add to a chart and drop it into a dashboard. Absolutely. And it's actually very simple. Uh, all you have to do is create a new dashboard. Uh, you'll see it'll prompt you right here for creating a new chart. And then when you pick what chart type you want, you'll see that we have a list of all of the metrics available to us. Right, and there could be thousands of metrics here, so you're basically just going to search for the one that you want. Exactly. So uh, with the example we were talking about earlier, which was a web server, I figured it would be appropriate to grab an APM statistic around uh, an HTTP request that's being made. And you could use composite metrics as well. You could put multiple metric types on the same chart. Absolutely. And Bradley, just real quickly, this, this APM metric came from where? So this actually came from the APM agent that we have uh, okay. versus the infrastructure agent. And so this is trace data. This is trace level yeah. data. So here we can see uh, in milliseconds the HTTP status response time to add it to the dashboard, just as simple as pressing save. And there you go. You've added your first chart. You're on your way to uh, creating your own dashboard. Voila.
I think the thing that's really interesting about this is it's kind of like when you, you, know, you buy a new car and then all of a sudden you start seeing that car all over the place, right? Once you start instrumenting your operations, you'll start finding all kinds of data that you can present in new ways for users that you never could before. And this process of building dashboards gets really, really fast. Yeah, it, it really does. And as you think about what we showed here with Logly and App Optics, there's different kinds of data that you have to think about. Log data, metrics data, trace data. And trying to figure out how to bring all of that together into a view that not only you can use from an operational perspective, but something that the boss can also see is pretty valuable. Yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't hurt at all. No, not at all. <laughs>